like the music. I, I, I turn it on and I leave it on. Music's killer. I just like listening. 100.3 FM. You guys have a really good station. The voice of the grand. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks once again for making CKRZ a part of your day. Coming up next, we have our weekly pandemic update from Six Nations Electric Chief, Mark Hill. Good afternoon, Al. How are you? Not bad. Not bad. Thank you, sir. You're, hol- you? you're holding up, eh? Yes. <laughs> That's good to hear. Doing well, knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again, Al, for the opportunity to join you uh, this Friday afternoon. Uh, Scandal Sago, good afternoon, Six Nations. I hope this message finds you and your family safe and healthy, both physically and mentally, during such tough times. I want to start by recognizing and honoring the bravery and sacrifices of all of our veterans across Turtle Island, past and present, including acknowledging all of our members of the Six Nations Veterans Association. This past week, with Aboriginal Veterans Day and Remembrance Day, I hope you all took some time to do the same. As the elected council, our efforts are guided by our veterans and ancestors like Six Nations' own Edith Montour, the first from any First Nation to become a registered nurse in Canada. She had to overcome many challenges before setting out to the front lines of the First World uh, World War. Canadian law prevented her from serving as a nurse with Canada's military, so she headed south of the border to help heal and save the lives of all of our allies. Before leaving, the 27-year-old Mohawk returned to her traditional territory for a ceremony in which she was presented with Mohawk clothing as burial wear in case she did not return. That gift was presented before we were aware of the full extent of the danger lurking in the trenches with the Spanish influenza. I have no doubt that their bravery and sacrifices inspire our own frontline workers as they continue their fight against COVID-19 today. I hope our veterans inspire every member of our community as we continue to fight this pandemic together. I was honored to lay a wreath on behalf of our community at the City of Brantford's virtual 2020 Remembrance Day ceremony. And on the topic of virtual meetings, we were excited to announce our Internet Towers project to enhance our Wi-Fi connection for our community. We all know that the current Internet coverage in Six Nations does not meet our needs, and the elected council in partnership with the Six Nations of the Grand River Development Corporation have entered into an arrangement with ExploreNet Communications to invest in a project to replace and build all new Internet Towers to enhance Internet service reliability and performance. We know the infrastructure will go a long way in helping deliver important information like these regular updates. And again, that's just part of our response as well to COVID-19 as many people are still working from home. As you know, our students are also still working online. Um, And so we're we're hoping to rectify some of the issues and you'll see some of the uh, community meetings coming up against uh, just in regards to that. Since my last update a week ago, the number of active cases in our community continues to decline. Uh, Since last Friday, the number of active cases decreased from four to just two active cases currently. Uh, In more good news, the total number of cases that have been resolved has increased from 90 to 93. Uh, I just want to congratulate to the three community members who have safely overcame their COVID-19 infections. I want to thank them for making the responsible decision to stay home and quarantine to protect themselves and their friends and family that they care for. Each of us must remain vigilant and take every measure we can to stay at home and stay away from the threat of catching the virus. Six Nations public health professionals continue to monitor and assess the situation in our community to decide the next steps on our path to recovery, including whether or not we move into another stage of our pandemic plan. Whether we move up or down in the stages and whether we increase or decrease public health measures will depend on how well we as a community listen to our current measures that are in place to help keep our number of infected cases from growing. One public health measure that has been proven to be extremely effective in stopping the spread of COVID-19 is the wearing of face masks and other face coverings. I would like to remind everybody that face coverings are mandatory in all indoor public spaces and for ride services. Unmonitored and in indoor and outdoor gathering sizes have been reduced to household members only. And as a continued precaution for the health and safety of our elders and knowledge keepers, non-essential visitors to the Iroquois Lodge are still not permitted at this time.
We continue to strongly encourage members not to travel to hotspot areas, including the Toronto, GTA and Peel regions, the Ottawa and Hamilton areas unless absolutely necessary. With Thanksgiving coming up south of the border, we hope our members will carefully consider the consequences of traveling to the U.S. to take part in gatherings with our brothers and sisters. Ashwegan Public Health officials continue to advise against all travel at this time and suggest traveling for essential purposes only. We continue to plead with any visitors or returning members to please respect our COVID-19 measures that are in place, including the requirement to self-isolate and monitor your symptoms after any travel. Contact tracing is still a very important tool that we use to contain and slow the spread of COVID-19 in our community. Consider keeping a journal or using a voice recording app on your phone to record your contact exposure over the past 14 days. We all must continue to follow the core health principles, which are staying home when ill, even with mild symptoms, only leaving your household for essential purposes, maintaining physical distance from others outside of your immediate household, only gatherings with those within your household, cleaning hands regularly with soap and water or hand sanitizer, wearing a face covering when in public places and regularly cleaning and disinfecting commonly touched surfaces within your home or at your work. For members wanting a COVID-19 test, please call the Six Nations Assessment Centre toll-free at 1-855-977-7737 or locally at 226-446-9909. A couple of other important numbers to remember include the COVID-19 hotline for businesses at 519-750-4908 and the emergency food support services at 519-717-3403. A reminder that they are open Mondays, Tuesdays and Fridays from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, this, this week I attended a community meeting organized by the Six Nations Land Defenders. I attended the meeting as an observer as I continued to hear the concerns and perspectives of everybody and all parties involved in this dispute. From the beginning, I have encouraged open and respectful dialogue that is guided by good faith. We have also been clear that our main concern is the health and safety of everybody involved. We hope everybody at the site will continue to follow the COVID-19 health and safety guidelines We also continue to call for a peaceful resolution to the dispute that avoids violence and destruction at all costs. I want to thank the Land Defenders for allowing me to take part in their community meeting. And last but of course not least, I want to extend my gratitude and appreciation to our local radio stations for allowing me on their shows to provide the community with these updates. Six Nations is very fortunate to have two local radio stations that serve its members. Uh, Until next Friday... Please stay safe, uh, stay healthy, and take care of one another. Nyawe, and thank you. Thank you, Chief Hill. And thanks to all of our listeners for uh, joining us this week. Stay safe, but more importantly, stay healthy. Support the only station that supports Six Nations and New Credit. CKRZ 100.3 Sonics FM.